It's just sort of see-through. What, all dead thin in the middle here? So they're just little hairs left. This is Paul. He's 26 and he wants more hair. Hundreds of thousands of men from around the world are going to Turkey for cheap hair transplant surgery. Over 90% of patients are coming from the United Kingdom. Paul's one of them, so we followed him on his journey to find out why more men are taking risks. I'm in the situation where I can't be repaired. There have been case reports around the world of people actually dying from hair transplants. And spending their hard-earned cash to get more hair. Paul lives in Middlesbrough with his mum and dad. Hi, yeah, nice to meet you. Good I'm yourself. Tiffany. Nice to meet you. In a week's time, Paul will be on a flight to Turkey to have hair transplant surgery. You'll constantly see me doing this all night. <laughs> I want to find out why he's doing it. So I'm here to meet him and his family. How does it make you feel that Paul's having this operation? Over the last year, his humour sort of receded as fast as his hairline. He's not as jokey as he used to be and he's not as confident as he used to be. So I'm just hoping that if this does go right, that it's going to bring back the humour and the old Paul back again. Paul works full time in a supermarket warehouse and has been saving up for six months for this treatment, which will cost him £1,400. And I'll just bring this, obviously, the long bit across to hide. Paul's taking me on a night out with his mates in Middlesbrough. While we're getting ready, he tells me what he sees when he looks at his hair in the mirror. This is uh, me at my worst, quite naughty. Even my girlfriend hasn't seen me like this. I hear hiding it, I hear flicking it across all the time. It embarrasses me going to the hairdressers and brush it forward and it's just... You just see people looking at me. So you're going to pay nearly £2,000 to... Money can't buy happiness, can it? It's worth it for me, £2,000 to have a full set of hair. Or even just the possibilities, good enough for me, I guess. Why do you feel you have to do something about it, though? It's just confidence. We'll be filming Paul's surgery as it happens, and there's a chance something could go wrong. There's been one case of somebody even dying after having a hair transplant in India possibly after reacting badly to an anaesthetic, and other men have done permanent damage to their hair. This is the bit that I really struggle to speak about. Um, this is because I know how much it's affected me. Jerry had two transplants, but some new hair didn't grow back. Now he can't have any more surgery. He wanted to warn Paul that he's now stuck with hair that he hates. I'm in the situation where I can't be repaired uh, and I'll never ever get what I set out for in, in the beginning. What do you think? Um, it's quite worrying actually. Considering his hair doesn't look good at all. Do you think because you're so focused on it going right, you've kind of shut off the option that it could go wrong? Well, I guess in the worst case scenario, if it does go wrong, I'm £2,000 down and I'll just shave my hair anyways. Um, come on a weekend mostly when I'm off work. Paul's taking me to his local social club to meet his best mates. Uh, he told me that some of their banter about his hair has made him question the way he looks. Is it more relating to your age? Yeah. Because you're, bang on you're 26. Money. And you, you're going bald. But you're not going bald bald though, are you? Yeah, but... It's... Like, in reality, you haven't got what we call an egg in a bun, have you? No, well, I haven't. In reality, have you got that? No. So how do you think you can understand what he's going through if you don't see anything wrong? I mean, it's receded a little that. bit there. Okay, what do I say here? Look in the mirror. We're looking, guys. It's Ali. Embrace the world this morning. I didn't even notice Paul's hair loss when I met him but it's obviously having such a big impact on his confidence that despite the risks, he's determined to go ahead with the surgery. Yeah. Istanbul is hair transplant city. Thousands of men travel from all over the world to get low price surgery in Turkey. And as you walk around, the patients are easy to spot. There are more than 300 clinics and businesses offering hair transplants here. 
One healthcare agency told us inquiries from the UK about hair loss treatment in Turkey have almost doubled in the past two years. I've come here with Paul and he's letting us film the whole procedure. It's his first time in Turkey and he's only going to be here for 48 hours. Okay, Paul, so I'm giving you a constant form. At the clinic, Paul meets his surgeons for the first time. His hair is inspected. So, Paul, you have bilateral recessions. And he's given a consultation. Do you want something special from us? Or do you want me to recommend to you what we are going to do? I don't want it to look fake, do you know what I mean? I want it to just look natural. The surgeons draw Paul's new hairline with marker pens. Did you like the front line? Yeah, yeah that's cool. Are we clear? Agreed? Perfect. And he's prepared for surgery. Paul will be awake for this eight hour operation. This looks painful, but it's actually a needle free gun used to inject a local anaesthetic. 2,700 hair follicles are taken from the back of Paul's head where he still has lots of hair. This surgery would have cost Paul around four times as much if he'd stayed at home to have it done. Back in the UK, some surgeons are concerned about patients travelling long distances for hair transplants and stress this procedure shouldn't be seen as a quick fix. One of the main disadvantages of having a hair transpl transplant abroad is not being able to have ongoing continual follow-up with your surgeon. There are some very, very experienced, very well qualified hair transplant surgeons in Turkey, but it is a, a, a bit of pot luck. The doctors doing Paul's transplant are experienced surgeons and say that people coming to Turkey for treatment should have it done in a hospital. If anything happens, we have uh, right steps to do the right intervention to the patient. During the last stage of the operation, Paul's follicles are reinserted. Sounds crazy, but I just can't believe they're actually pushing hair into his head. The surgeons say it will be at least six months until Paul sees good results. Having watched this so close up, I can tell that this has been more gruelling than Paul expected. Well, I just didn't take it out and put it in the front, but I just didn't realise how many injections it was and how long it actually is. But what's going on inside Paul's head and inside the heads of thousands of other young men putting themselves through this? Celebrities are having it done. You see a lot of this on social media and men are more and more image conscious than ever before. Some psychologists have been watching this trend closely and they're concerned. It's really important to have a psychological evaluation before rushing into any cosmetic surgery procedure. Some people have underlying low self-esteem and the surgery is not actually going to fix anything. They're not going to be happier afterwards and they may focus on other areas that they want to improve and it becomes addictive or obsessive. The bandages go on and it's time for Paul to see his new look. He hasn't seen it. That's the most important Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looks mental. It looks maybe. what? There's looks mental. Like maybe now it's mental. <laughs> I hope it. Yeah. yeah. With the procedure over, all Paul can do now is head home and wait to see if and how his hair grows back. A month later, I'm back in Middlesbrough to see how Paul's hair's growing and to find out how his new look is going down with his family. Hi! Hello. How are you? you okay? Good, thanks. How are you? How are you? <laughs> oh, let me have a look at your hair. The first month after surgery is the worst period for hair transplant patients. After around 10 days, the hair from the transplanted follicles falls out and it can take up to six months for new hair to properly grow back. I was like waking up and I was happy about it. I was like looking at it and I was like, yeah, it looks so cool. So looking at his hair now, 
Does he have any regrets? I might go back for another one, actually, depending on how this turns out. You're thinking of going back already? It's like having a puzzle and having one piece missing. So I'm looking in the mirror now, it is a bit light, so I might consider going back for that. With young men feeling pressure from celebrity culture, society and those around them, and an industry making cosmetic surgery cheaper, it looks like more and more guys will be going to extreme lengths to change the way they look. But I wonder whether they'll ever be satisfied. Like Paul said, he's already considering going back for more. It's just what the youngins do nowadays. It's vanity for them, isn't it? TV pressure. You know, see all these people on these shows like Love Island and they've got to be like them. And it's not really, that's not the real world. He's fine the way he is, bald or what, he's a good lad, he's alright.